Hello everyone, my name is Marta Limanchik and I'm a PhD student at the Data Analytics and Computational Statistics Group at the Hasso Plattner Institute in Potsdam. I will give you today some insights on how to evaluate convolutional neural networks containing interactions between genomic motifs. Interpretability gained a high importance in computational biology. This can be to validate model predictions or to gain new insights in biological mechanisms. For sequence-based convolutional neural networks, there already exist multiple methods to interpret a prediction for input sequences. This is often done by assigning importance scores to the input nucleotides to identify motifs which could have a biological relevance for the given task. Often, it is not only one motive responsible for an outcome, but rather an interaction between multiple of them. It is not clear how the dependencies between motives could have an influence on pattern learning and therefore also on interpretability. The question we want to solve is, how can we evaluate genomic convolutional neural networks containing interactions between motives? Our approach consists of three steps. First, defining interactions which could occur in genomic sequence data. Then, based on these definitions, generate synthetic data sets and identify which issues could occur depending on the setting. And finally, evaluating convolutional neural networks trained on this data to see how well motives can be captured by attribution methods based on this data. Here we define interactions with, re with respect to the contribution to the outcome. An interaction consists of at least two motives, and we separate between individual contributions from single motives and mutual contributions when motives are interacting. For example, an additive interaction consists of individual contributions and does not have a mutual interaction contribution. In multiplicative interactions, all motives need to be present in a sequence so that beside the individual contribution, the motives also mutually contribute. There are also other possible interactions which could occur. For example, enhancing or inhibiting interactions, which are a special case from multiplicative interactions. Here, the mutual contribution is only based on the enhanced or inhibited motive's contribution, but could, would not count if the other motives aren't present. The next step is data generation. I will show you an example which issues can occur when generating a synthetical data set for one of the interaction concepts. In this case, we look at binary classification problems containing a multiplicative interaction set of motives. If a sequence contains all of these motives, it belongs to the positive class. There are a few possibilities how to design this interaction. In the first setting, positive data contains a previously described sequences with all motives, while the negative data set consists of only random sequences without any motive. The problem here is that there is a chance that model, the model could only learn a subset of the motives since it would be sufficient to separate it from the negative class. In the second case, we include motives, but at least one is always missing, so 0 to k minus 1 motives. Here the model is forced to learn all the patterns. The issue is that the model could simply learn to count the patterns instead of learning explicitly an interaction within the network. So as the third case, we use additional interactions. You can think of it as sequences with subpopulations, for example, organisms. So one positive sequence would contain all motives from one of the interactions. In this case, the model is forced to distinguish between the interactions and has to learn that patterns belong together. Here, the dependency between the patterns could have a negative impact on the interpretability. For the evaluation, we created four datasets with motives from the JASPER database for transcription factor binding sites and implemented the previously mentioned cases. On the top left, you can see the results from a data set where the positive data contains only one interaction and the negative data set only random sequences in the, uh, in the data set. On the top right, the data set contains also one interaction in the positive set, but contains also 0 to k minus 1 motives instead of the random sequences. The third and the fourth data set contain four interactions instead of only one in the positive data set. And the negative data sets are created analogously like the other two. You can see them at the bottom. 
We trained multiple convolutional neural networks with the same architecture, except for an increase of filters for the multiple interactions, since there are, since there are more patterns to learn. We calculated important scores using DeepShap for each of the 4,000 synthetically generated test sequences, which contained the interaction of interest, which is in every data set. Based on the scores, we defined a motive as detected or not detected by the attribution method. You can find the specifics regarding model training and the evalu evaluation in the poster. On the x-axis, the number of detected motives is, in one sequence is shown. We can observe that when adding motives to the negative data set, the number of, of detected motives decreased while the performance stays similar. So, in less, for example, you can see that in less sequences, all four motives could be detected. The same applies to the increased number of subpopulations. However, here's this effect, here this effect could also be due to a higher complexity because we have more patterns in the data. In our current work, we propose a concept of interaction analysis for genomic convolutional neural networks. As, I've, as I have shown you, we defined interactions which could appear in biological sequences. When generating data sets, we took into account that the definitions of the positive and negative data set can have different impacts on pattern learning within the network and therefore also on interpretability, which we could show on our example for a multiplicative interaction data set for binary classification. Currently, we are expanding it to other interaction definitions. And also we include layer importance to locate pattern learning so we can detect if there are differences between the data sets regarding the pattern learning. Thank you for listening and I'm happy to chat and discuss how to improve evaluations for genomic convolutional neural networks with motive interactions.